Good question, Senator. Um, anywhere where there is a power dynamic um, is where this problem is really rampant. Um, I've seen it in sports. Uh, I've seen it in politics. I've seen it with racial, a racial component. I've seen it with a, uh, economic components. And Hollywood uh, definitely, definitely has been uh, a problem area simply because there are so many people who view this as a dream. And what happens is someone has power over these dreams. And what happens is also is that you get tricked into thinking that this type of behavior is expected, that it's part of the job, that this harassment, abuse, even rape is part of your job description. And, you know, I sit here before you in this committee just as an example, uh, because a lot of people don't believe that a person like me could actually be victimized. And what happened to me has happened to many, many other men in Hollywood. And since I came forward with my story, I have had thousands and thousands of men uh, come to me and say, me too, my, this is my story. But I did not have the confidence or I, I did not feel safe enough to come out because what happens is, you know, you get blacklisted. Your career is in danger. After that, no one wants to work with you. And it is really, really important, I feel, to keep this conversation going. And, and another thing is, I heard time and time again about the rights that my predator had. But I was never told about the rights that I had as a survivor. And that was the, the wake up call that I knew I had to be a, a part of what's happening here today in regards to the sexual assault survivors bill of rights. Because now if you know what you can do, you can actually do something about it. Uh, Senator Feinstein. Uh, thanks, Mr. Chairman. Uh, Mr. Cruz, I'd like to just continue uh, where the chairman was in his questioning. So this happened to you at an event. Was it a single instance or were there more instances? Did you, who did you talk to about it? What kind of advice did you seek? Did you hide it? What, because you, you know, you're very overt, you're very direct. And I wonder if was if that was you at the time, or this is a new you. Thank you for your question, Senator. Um, I was very vocal immediately. I was at an event with my wife, and what happened was this was this the person who did this was a he was the head of the motion picture department at my own agency. Uh, I don't know what was going on in his head. He actually did it twice in the same night in front of my wife. Uh, he says he was drunk. He said he was under, you know, he wasn't himself. And I immediately, you know, the first reaction was to be violent. And I immediately held back. Why weren't you? You're a big, powerful man. Why didn't you? Senator, as a black man in America. <sighs> Say it as it is. I think it's important. You only have a few shots at success. You only have a few chances to make yourself a viable member of the community. I'm from Flint, Michigan. I have seen many, many young black men who were provoked into violence and they were in prison and then, or they were killed and they're not here. My wife for years prepared me. She said, if you ever get goaded, if you ever get prodded, if you ever have anyone try to 
try to push you into any kind of situation, don't do it. Don't be violent. And she trained me. I'll be honest with you. It was the strength of my wife who trained me and told me if this situation happens, let's leave. And the training worked because I did not go into my first reaction. I grabbed her hand. We left. But the next day, I went right to the agency, right? And I have texts, I have uh, phone conversations, and I said, this is unacceptable. And I told them how, you know, I almost got violent, but I didn't. And I said, what are you going to do about this predator that you have roaming your hallways? And you know, I was told, we're going to do everything in our power. We are going to handle this, Terry. You're right. It is unacceptable. And then they disappear. Nothing happened. Did you go back again? Did you talk to them again? I, I yes, I talked to and everyone why, I could why talk did to. They disappear. And I asked that he. I said this man actually called me, and he apologized. Uh. And this was the thing. And they were like, "My bad." And I'm going. You know, so you were supposed to forgive and forget, and that was the agency position, are you saying? That's what they were saying. Yeah. And I said, first of all, we're not talking about you stepped on my foot by accident. That's where, I'm sorry, I didn't know what I was doing. You assaulted me. Assaulted. And I fully, fully expected them to first of all to fire this individual and that didn't happen i expected there to be an investigation and that didn't happen and so senator, it was hushed up senator i have to tell you under the it was hushed up and in the in the culture at that time i believe no one would believe me if i went public mm -hmm. i actually was trying to handle it with them and once the me too movement broke and once I saw some of Weinstein's victims come forward, it actually empowered me to tell my story in support of these women. Let me ask you, do you talk with others? Do you find this is true with others as well, that they are empowered now to stick it out? <clears throat> I see it with a lot of women coming forward. I don't see it with a lot of men coming forward. Well, yes, thank you, Senator, for that question. Um, <coughs> there have been men coming forward, but I have to say that the silence is deafening when it comes to men talking about this issue, simply because you're talking about a complicit system. You're talking about uh, women who are raped, thrown behind dumpsters, and their dads say, hey, you know, we shouldn't ruin his life because it's a good time. We're in Hollywood where, you know, <coughs> men look at other, it's a whole other system where they view the casting couch as perks of the job, where they, they literally judge the women on how they look and who's going to attack her first. I have been privy to these conversations and I have to say, you gotta understand, I'm not pointing a finger, I, as Terry Crews was a member of this toxic masculine world. And where, no, did I molest anyone? Did I assault anyone? Did I rape anyone? No, but I was complicit because I looked the other way. I've always said that men need to hold other men accountable. That is the only way the system is going to change. When you see something when you see this type of behavior, if another man can come up to a man and say, we don't do that, we're not allowing that here, all of a sudden the culture will begin to change. And if I have to be the first one that's going to do it, then let it be. I will be that one. My time is up, but thank you for your strength, your honesty, and your perseverance. It's very important. Thank you, Thank Senator. you, Mr. Chairman. Yeah. Thank you. Senator Tillis. <laughs> Mr. Chairman, thank you for holding the hearing on a very important topic. I'm from North Carolina, and I'm proud to say that we've made tremendous progress on this subject uh, through 
uh, a series of bills, some of which when I was Speaker of the House. In fact, right now we're weighing the, the value, and uh, Ms. Wynn, I don't know if you're familiar with it, but the value of added constitutional protections on um, victims' rights. Uh,